Look up to him and say, you are able. You are able. Our, God Our God is able. My God is able. able. Ephesians 3.20, please. We read one verse. Ephesians 3.20. Let's read it together, church. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all we can think. You know what? Put another version for me. Uh, let's go King James Version. That one is always right on track there. King James Version will be nice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we go now? Exceedingly abundantly. Uh -huh. Now unto him that is able to do what? Abundantly above all. Let's stop right there. God said he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Who is he saying this to? To you and I. God is saying, whatever you have in your heart, I am able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Somebody say, exceedingly. Exceedingly. Abundantly, above all. I was just meditating on my life in the last weeks. And I realized, oh God, I've done exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ask or imagine. And I know I'm not the only one who can testify of such. You know when you want to appreciate what God does in your life, don't look at your present position. If you want to know... How good and how God have done exceedingly, abundantly, above all, in the life of one person, do not look at your present position. You need to look backward and know where it took you from. I know I'm speaking to some people here. Because when you look at your present situation... You can get overwhelmed thinking, oh God, you haven't done this yet. I haven't got this yet. I haven't achieved this yet. I haven't accomplished this yet. But when you look back, the angel asked Agar, Agar, where did you come from and where are you going? Sometimes you need to know where you come from so you can appreciate where God is taking you to. If you lose sight of where God took you from, you will get discouraged in your present situation thinking God is no longer able. But I've come this morning to tell you, no matter what you are going through, this word become true for you. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or imagine. Just a second. Some of you were alcoholic. Some of you are under drugs. Some of you were lost in sin, bondage of every type. Some of them never thought you would get married one day. Some of you never thought you would have family. Yes, I know family has its burden, but I'm telling you, you are blessed because one time you were alone. Today you have a husband. Today you are married. Today you have a place to sleep. When one time you didn't have a place to sleep, when I look back, I know God has blessed me and he has done exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Knowing that, I know my days, my future will be brighter. David said, this giant, I never thought any, truly. And he's really tall. And his name is Goliath. I recognize I never thought a Goliath. And I never thought a giant. But you know what? Yesterday, I faced a bear. And God in his ability empowered me to tear down the bear to pieces. And the other day, a lion came forth also. And God in his ability empowered me to tear down the lion to pieces. The same God who empowered me to overcome a lion. The same God that empowered me to kill a bear. Even though I never kill a Goliath, I am still standing because him never changes. 
I'm standing on my testimony of yesterday so I can believe for my miracle of tomorrow. Am I speaking to somebody? Don't let the devil take away the fact that God has been good to you. He has been good to your family. He has been generous to you. He has sustained you when you are weak. He has encouraged you when you are tired. He has lifted you up when you couldn't stand. Am I speaking to somebody? God has been good to you. You are still alive today because God has been good to you. You are still in your right mind today because God has been good to you. You can still have a smile today because God has been good to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, but he has been good to me. He has blessed me with a wonderful wife. He has blessed me with wonderful children. He has blessed me with wonderful church people. He has blessed me with wonderful leaders. He has blessed me with wonderful. Everybody, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. If you are not blessed, tell God, I am blessed for me. Yes, you bless me. He has blessed me. Hallelujah. Mandala Badagayashta. He has blessed me exceedingly, abundantly, above. I never dreamed that I will raise up leaders. I never dreamed that I will be born again standing in the church instead of the mosque. I never dreamed that I will be a God chaser, not a woman chaser. I never dreamed that I can stand and wear a shoe. I never dreamed that I will stand on a pulpit and be the servant of the Most High God. I never dreamed that I will be a collaborator with Jesus Christ. I never dreamed that I can pray for somebody and his life will recover. Today, I am blessed exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I know you are going through some tough time, but you must recognize that you are blessed. You must recognize you are blessed. Don't let the devil tell you that God has forgotten you. He say, I will not forget you. I will not forsake you. I will not abandon you. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall be by you in the fire. I shall be by you in the valley. I shall be by you on the mountain. I shall be by you. I am blessed. I am blessed. Turn your face to somebody. Tell him, he is blessed. Just because of you, I'm blessed. Because of you, I am blessed. Because of you, I am blessed. Because of you, Heidi, I am blessed. Because of you, Travis, I am blessed. Because of you, Pastor Dolores, I am blessed. Because of you, Elisa, I am blessed. Mandala Badagashta. He is able to do exceedingly. What is in your heart today? He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. One day he visited a woman called Sarah. When he finished to eat the meat, when he finished to eat the meat, he will re he's removing the meat out of his teeth, you know. God arrived, he hasn't eaten, he doesn't prophesy. He's quiet until they bring the goat meat, mutton. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when he finished to eat, only when he finished to eat, he's going to answer. Sarah, I haven't seen you. Where are you? Sarah said, I'm in the little hut there somewhere. I feel so discouraged. I'm hiding. I'm locking myself in the little hut. I have no child to show how blessed I am. I have no fruit to show that you've been good to me. So when I see you coming, I went and hid myself. He said, Sarah, no matter where you are hiding, I'm still aware that you are here. Are you hearing me, somebody? It doesn't matter which hat you are in. Depression, discouragement, when I give up, unbelief. It doesn't matter, Sarah. You are never far for me to mention and acknowledge you. Sarah, where are you? God is calling somebody today. Where are you? Where are you, Sarah? Sarah said, uh, I'm here in this hiding place. It's not, I'm not worthy. He said, it's not about worthiness. Your worthiness is not that matters. It is the fact that I am worthy for you. 
Where are you? He said, I'm here. Is it Sarah? Next year by this time, Haraba Shataka. You know, God is so amazing. He said, next year by this time. Why did he not say tomorrow? Because God knows, even though he's a miracle of God, the process of conception still needs to be nine months. God will not give you a premature blessing. Hey! Hey, Mandala Baga Yadavashta. Are you hearing me, somebody? God won't give you a premature blessing because it will bring more problems to you. So I said, the blessing God has for you today is ripe. I say it's ripe. It is ripe. One day, Jesus came out of the dead and he walked among the living. And he went fishing, and he, he get the fish, he begin to cook the fish. And he said, Master, is it you? He said, yeah, it's me. I have a prepared fish for you. Somebody say prepared fish. Yes. Not raw fish. Yes. He prepared the fish already. In number one, ready to be eaten. There is a fish that God has caught for you. And the reason you think he has not done it it's because he has caught the fish. He's just preparing it. Amen. You are still looking and say, Lord, you are not fishing for me. Why are you not fishing for me? The fish has been caught already, friends. Don't let him go fish again. He is just preparing. Somebody say, God has a prepared blessing for me. Saran, next year I'm coming back home. And you will have a child. I like what Sarah says. She laughed. <laughs> Oh, don't exaggerate, oh man. Come, you know my condition, oh. I'm 90 years old. And besides that, since I was young, this didn't happen. My womb was already closed. And now, on the top of this, I'm dry. Even my husband, he's 10 years older than me. He's 100 now. Oh, <laughs> God, I know you're so good, but still, don't exaggerate. He <laughs> says, Sarah, you're laughing. No, 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 I'm not laughing. You know, I'm not laughing. He said, no, you are laughing, and it's okay. You know why? Because in dry, dry bone, there was a laughter. Amen. And that laughter name was Isaac. Amen. Isaac means laughter. I'm here to tell you, in this season, God is about to release somebody's laughter. Amen. You've been carrying this laughter. God will make you laugh again. God will make you laugh again. God will make you dance again. God will make you shout again. God will make you run again. He will make you believe again. He will make you lift up your hand again. God will make you testify again. Who am I talking to this morning? God will make you testify again. Praise the Lord. Here is what Sarah said in Genesis 21.7. Genesis 21.7. And she said, Who will have said to Abraham, that Sarah will nurse children. Yet, yet, I have borne him a son in his old age. You know when you read the Bible, you got to catch the details. In his what? God doesn't need to make you younger so you can conceive. <laughs> Are you hearing me? No, no, no. You will still remain old and he still deliver what young people can do. Are you hearing that? You are still old, but you are doing what 20 years old people do. And people wonder, ah, how did you achieve such? At your age, you are not able to do that. Yes, I am not able. But God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. All include all for you. Amen. It's include all for you. Amen. Who will have believed that me, Sarah, dry, old, will have nursed a child? God is able. There is a young girl, she was a virgin, her name was Mary. One day an angel came to visit her. And the angel saluted her in the Roman language. Hail Mary to a Jewish woman. It's interesting. How heaven can salute you. 
in a different language, yet you understand what God is saying. You know, God has a language for each one of you. Everybody has a simple, pure language of God alone. When God speaks to me, he will use soccer. And it's true. I see myself outside. I know I'm going too far. Come back. The referee, outside. Amen. And he said to Mary, Mary, I come here to ask you permission for my master. You will have a child. And she said, hold it. You know, I'm betrothed to Joseph. No matter what this master is, I cannot give up on Joseph because I'm linked to him. He said, no, 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 Mary, I'm speaking from heavenly perspective, not earthly perspective. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Amen. Remove your eyes from the things beneath. Amen. You know, whenever you become consumed with earth things, frustration will enter your heart. Discouragement will visit you. Your joy will begin to disappear. But he said, what I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you from heavenly perspective. I just want you to agree. You know, today, we agree with a lot of people and we don't agree with God. Your agreement needs to begin with God. He said, okay, let it be so according to your word. You see, that's what God wants this morning to do a miracle for you. Amen. <laughs> Let it be so, according. You see, if Mary did not agree, Mary will not have the child. Because God will not force himself on anybody. I want you to heed me. Sometimes we feel like God, you know, if you want, you can do it anyway. No, 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 no. God wants agreement. God needs an agreement with you. Eden, you can do it. He doesn't want you to do it. He just wants you to agree. Let it be so, according to your word. If God has come on Mary without Mary agreeing, that was rape. And God is bound by his own word. So ladies and gentlemen, no matter how big that calling and the promise God has for you, all he needs from you is to agree with his word. And Mary said, let it be so according to your word. We have to come to agree with the word of God. What God say about you, you have to come in agreement with it. And he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. I have dreams in my heart, as I spoke to you in the beginning of the year. When I think about those dreams, in the natural perspective, I get overwhelmed. You feel like, no, 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 leave it alone. But God says, not by might, not by power. I want you today to drop your dreams and your promises on the altar. I'm going to tell you, if you're not able to drop it on the altar, it might not be God's promise. Because there's no altar for Ishmael. There's an altar for Isaac. What you can release from your hands might not be yours. If you're afraid you will lose it, it might not be yours. I want everyone on the sound of my voice. God has given you promises. I don't know how old and how long they have been in your heart. I want you to remove them from your shoulders, to remove them from your ability to make things happen, and know that God is able. <laughs> our greatest frustration is when we take our life in charge. When we take over our own life, we become the directors of our lives. Then we begin to suffer because you are not strong enough to fulfill what God has put in you. You are not strong enough. You have to relinquish it to God. What is paining you? What is overwhelming you? Is it finances? Is it marriage? Is it your children? Is it your calling? Is it your gift? I don't know. Is it your business? Whatever it is, you have to relinquish it and bring it to the altar as Isaac was brought to the altar. God spoke to me last night 
And he said like this, I am the God of all provisions and providence. Providence is God work. It's when God intervenes in the affair of man and he begins to work. He begins to turn things around. I look where God took me from, from a village. No light, no light, no car, no nothing. Real village, the real, 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 real one. The first day I saw a white person, long hair like Elisa, blonde hair like that. I feel like it was like a god, genie. It's like genius. I wanted to touch their hair and smell them. You understand? That's where your pastor comes from. But yet, before I was conceived, in the womb of my mother, God knew me. He has set me aside, knowing my life and my ministry will be in this country called Canada, where it's called minus 40. How are you hearing me? One day, a black man went to see God and he said, Father, I really have a few questions. I, I, I didn't want a question, but I'm going to ask you a question. He said, yeah, go ahead. He said, why did you create me with those lean legs, long legs like that? He said, son, you live in the jungle. You know, you get out those lean legs. When the lion chase after you, you can outrun the lion. He said, ah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, what about this dark skin that carries so much responsibility? What, why, why this? He said, my son, you know, it is so sunny. I had to make you dark. If not, you will be burned every minute. That's why I created you like that. He said, wow, okay. Wow, God, you always have answered. This is amazing. What about my hair? Why are they a little short and twisted like that? Why are they are not long like Samsung hair, you know, like the Indian hair? He said, son, you know. In the jungle you run, if you have too many hair, you know. <laughs> 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 it can get cut up in the branches there. Leave the head alone. Leave the head alone. He said, okay. What am I doing in Calgary from the village, God? With lean leg, dark skin, and sword. What am I doing here? For my purpose. For my purpose. He will outlook your background. He will outlook where you come from. He will outlook the hurt. He will outlook the burden. He will outlook the abuse and raise you up to be a spoke man and a spoke woman. God has not forgotten about you. He is able in your life. Hallelujah. God said, I am a God of divine providence. He said, you see Moses. Moses was born in the poor areas. In the slab there, slab. Where the slave lives, no elect the Nile. You, you got to go see the Nile. There's a lot of crocodile in this thing. I mean, there is crocodile at every mirror. Now, a little basket floating on the water in the midst of the crocodile dundies. And there's no human being to protect him. Somebody say divine providence. Yeah. Say it again, divine providence. Yeah. It's when God comes to work for you. Yeah. You are floating. And beside that, the slave live in the valley. And the matting from the valley, where the normal the water should float away, it ends up being on the top of the hill floating with that engine. Somebody said divine providence. You know when God is for you, who can be against you? He's going against the current. Sometimes God will take you against the current. Don't try to be a flower. Don't try to align with the crowd. Don't try. Listen to me. When God begins to want to raise you up, he separates you. That amen was Isaac. Before that, he made one himself, Ishmael. So there's one Abraham and, and, and Sarah made by their own ability. And there is one God made by his own ability. There's a lot of things in our lives. Some are Ishmael type. Some are Isaac type. When I tell you to go to the altar, the Ishmael, you will not leave it here because Ishmael has no altar. In the morning, as they are growing up, Ishmael begins to play tricky things on Isaac. And the mom said, Honey, this is my blood. I can't let him go. He said, Honey, that's the wife speaking. 
Ishmael must go. God did not have Ishmael in his mind just for the sake of it. It's because God has in his mind Joseph. Okay, I will make it clear for you. God had in his mind three generations. He's talking here, but he's doing something here for the sake of three generations. You got to catch this. Don't think it's all about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. God is thinking three generations in the present. So whatever you are going through, even if you don't worry, it's going to profit somebody in your generation. Three generations, four generations, five generations, because he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. He is able. He is able. Nothing is wasted with him. As we prepare the atmosphere, I'm going to ask everybody. I want you to come and leave your promise, your burden. This thing that you know God you give me, you have promised me. I haven't seen come to pass. Just like Isaac was promised one. Don't run to fulfill it. You know, when I talk like that, it seems like, oh, yeah, so should we not do anything? I'm telling you, I have learned in my few years on this earth, and especially as a minister, every time you take charge of things, you will spoil it. God was able to find David in the backyard without internet. God can raise you up out of the ashes. Sometimes we possess our calling. You know, God called me, I have to be doing this. I, I am going to, I'm going to do this now. You know what, rest. And we just hear the word, just rest. This is not about you. It's not about your calling. Just rest. God is the one who call you. God is the one who can raise you up. God is the one who will impart. The Bible says, in him give the willing and the doing. The willing and the doing. He is able. Mary did not pray enough for her to be chosen. David did not pray enough for him to be chosen. Joseph will not pray enough more than anybody for him to be chosen. I want you to relax, rest, and let God be. Let God be. Let God be. This thing that you are struggling, that is pushing you down, pushing you out, tearing you, let God be. You should not be the director of your destiny. Let God be. Where you are today, it was not by might. It was not by your expertise. It was not by your ways of doing things. It was because God did it. He can move things around. The Bible said the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And he can move it like the flows of water. God can move you. You don't need to move yourself. Hallelujah. Provision is coming to this house. Provision is coming to your family. Provision is coming to your family. Rest. Hold one another hands and just close your eyes for a few seconds. And then I will release you as the worship team is preparing. Rest. I want you from the place of rest you can bring to the altar your promise. I just want you to come and just put it before God. Enumerate them if you want to. And then move back to your chair. Because those are the things that are overwhelming you. Because you are taking charge of your own life. Trust Him. His ways are better. So you don't get hurt again. Rest. Rest in His love. Rest in Him. Don't perform. Just rest. Trust Him. Let him surround you with his hands as the mountains surround Jerusalem. In that place of rest, the stress will be lifted up. Frustration will hardly, when your heart will move away. Confusion in your mind will be lifted up. You will begin to see clearly. A flow of joy will begin to come. The walls 
will be teared down. Let him take you back to the joy of your salvation. Rest in him. The children will be okay. Rest in him. The business will be fine. Rest in him. The ministry will be okay. Just rest. Rest in him. Every mighty man and woman, father, mother, rest in him. Samson rested, but rested in the wrong place. But you, you rest today in his arms of love. He loves you. You are worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. Now move from the front and bring your promises to him. Those things that overwhelm you, that thing that you possess. Abraham did not possess Isaac. Abraham released Isaac. Probably it's your children. Probably is your calling. Probably is destiny. Probably is your plans, your ideas. I don't know. Just release it to him and go free. Go joyful. Go. It's not yours to fulfill. It's not yours to make happen. It's not yours to struggle with. It's not yours to fight. It's not yours to perform. Just release him in his capable hands. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. That he is able to keep what I've entrusted to him until that day. God is able to keep that promise for you. Until that day, a prepared blessing. No premature let him wipe your tears. Let him comfort you. Let him rub your shoulders. Let him strengthen your feeble knees. It is in the beginning and it still is right now. You are not giving anything new to him. You are giving him what is already his. That calling is not yours, it's his. That business is not yours, it's the Lord. Yes, I know, we know that. But with our human mind, we begin to take possession and entitlement. Give back the title to God. Give back the title deed of your promises to God. Give back the title deed of your calling to God. Give back the title deed of your children. The title deed of your marriage. Of your relationship, give back the title deed and go free. Go free because he loves you. Because this call does not determine who you are. He said to Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He didn't mention his position. He didn't mention what he was ruling over. He didn't mention his gifts. He did mention the anointing in which he will flow. He will not mention that he was an apostle. He was a pastor, a CEO, a president, a owner, a worker, a laborer. He did not mention that. He said, this is my son. He took it personal. Relationship, heart to heart, soul to soul. Even though he had not done a miracle yet, he said, I am pleased with you. He had not healed anybody yet. He said, I am pleased with you. He had not achieved any ministry work yet, but he said, I am pleased with you. We find our identity in him, not in what we do, not in what we can do. We lose worth of ourselves because we think it's in the doing. If I have done this, I will feel more fulfilled. You are fulfilling him because he is God and he is able. Holy Spirit, touch your people right now. Comfort those who are weeping. Uplift those who are weak. Strengthen those who need strength. Recover the joy. Restore the peace. Restore righteousness. Lift them up to you in the secret place. 
seeking your face, not what they will do for you. Standing in your presence, worshiping like a child, take us back to the joy of our salvation. Take us back to the joy of our salvation, oh God. Mande Lebosa. When we didn't know much Greek and Hebrews, where we didn't know much about Bible and calling and destiny and ministry and business and work, where we didn't know anything about doing, take us back to the place of intimacy. Thank you for your Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you for light shoulders. Come to me, all who are tired and weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is light. My burden is light. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, O Lord Jesus. Rise to your feet right now, church. Lift up your two hands to him and begin to thank him.